Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factor. Last episode we went ahead and built what we see in the emulator here. We basically have a different sort order, uh, a little custom sort UI that we implemented here that kind of just changes around the data here. Uh, we are fetching all of this data here, all these quotes from an API, uh, and then we just kind of sort them a little bit here. If you missed it, I recommend you checking it out because it's got some pretty good content. And as we can see over here in the code, we have our all quotes screen. We have a sealed class to kind of capture our sort order. We have our sort component, and then we have our all quotes display, which is, you know, basically all the quotes that you see on screen. But in today's episode, it's gonna be a little bit different. We're not really gonna be hitting the keyboard here. Instead, we're gonna be going through a pull request, otherwise known as a PR. Uh, so someone in the comments here, I've been chatting with back and forth, had a really good idea about basically the way we were sorting something. So taking a quick look here at our uh, this bit of logic, right? We have our current sort order, the mutable state of the sort order, and then we basically run this calculation here. Now, in particular for the longest here, uh, we were sorting by the display length of the quote itself, and then we were reversing it uh, because realistically that would give us the shortest. So point is, very simple fix here, but he uh, did so via a pull request, which really helps us out. I'm not going to pick the pull request apart pretty, you know, too much. It's actually pretty straightforward and simple. But one thing that does stick out to me here is, um, in case you didn't know, I mean, you have the chance to change this when you are opening a pull request. But when you make a commit, right, if you actually type your commit message in and then you push your branch and then you go ahead and create a pull request from that branch, it will cap your commit message, I believe, at 50 characters. And then after that, it will add anything else afterwards to the description of the PR. So pro tip, either keep your simple PRs under 50 characters for uh, you know, your, your commit message, or you can always just edit it as you're creating a PR here. So anyway, we're gonna update our all quote screen, do sort by descending instead of the reversed. First PR, be gentle, absolutely. Thank you so much for doing this. But the way that I go ahead and traditionally look at PRs here, especially if they're smaller, which I definitely encourage, is just flipping over to the files changed here to kind of just see what we have going on. I do prefer this split view here. I just find it easier to work with. You can go ahead and obviously change that here to make it unified. Um, you know, you kind of just do whatever you want, whatever works best for you. And if there were maybe more than just one file, uh, there would be like a little file tree on the side, which is totally cool. As you go through different files, you can go ahead and click this viewed thing. It will go ahead and collapse that file for you in this little, uh, you know, screen, and then you can just go ahead and, and make progress. But again, this one was pretty simple, right? We're just gonna go from sorted by dot reversed to sort by descending, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, whether you have something, you know, positive or negative to say, you can go ahead and kind of click and drag here uh, to get a multi-line comment, or you can just click on any individual line to go ahead and comment. I normally prefer to kind of capture the entire bit here that you're looking at, because uh, you'll see why in a second, it just makes it look a lot nicer at the conversation level uh, you know, of the PR view. So quite simply here, you, know, you can go ahead and just comment whatever you really want. You, know, you can go ahead and kind of uh, add in a bunch of different you know, annotations to things, right? If you wanted to go ahead and you know, have something look like a bit of code, you can always switch over to this preview tab. Otherwise you can just keep it raw writing. Uh, you, know, you can also italicize certain things or make them bold, which I believe, yeah, it goes like that. Right. So then you can just kind of see how, um, you know, the preview of what it's going to actually look like. You can go ahead and embed images and all that kind of stuff in there. So it's really, really powerful, um, you know, but you do kind of want to, in my opinion, you want to grab a good section of the PR that you're looking at um, to, to make this multi-line comment. So a pretty simple comment here, right? Hey, this looks great. Thanks for cleaning this up. Um, I would definitely encourage if you are doing pull requests for your team uh, or other team members to comment in both positive and negative cases, right? You don't always just want to be picking things apart. You don't always want to just be, uh, you know, requesting changes all along, uh, you know, every, every time you, you do a review, even if you just kind of, you know, select a bunch of lines and write nice with an exclamation point or the fire emoji or a thumbs up, whatever it is, like, you know, people like that valid feedback as well, not only negative. So definitely use the pull request flow as a way to provide feedback. Um, you know, obviously you're going to have to give the negative feedback if you need to, but the positive one as well. Uh, so in this case here, you could either do add single comment or start a review. I'm going to go ahead and start a review because why not? You'll then see that this uh, uh, comment here is pending, right? And that means that it's not going to complete until, uh, it's not going to appear in this conversation tab over here until you go ahead and finish the review. 
So then we go ahead and kind of click that we viewed that uh, file, go ahead and finish the review. Now you can leave a comment for the overall pull request, which is separate than any little comments that you put along the way. So I'm gonna just put something here to kind of show you guys. So pretty straightforward, LGTM going to merge, LGTM stands for looks good to me, or uh, SGTM sounds good to me, pretty common, um, you know, vernacular and, and, and uh, acronyms and such, but you could also write it out. And then you're gonna go ahead and have to select one of the three different ways or, or like uh, ways to finish the review, right? So you're gonna either comment, you're gonna approve and or request changes. Normally request changes, pretty obvious. You're not gonna go ahead and merge that. Comment is maybe, you know, you're kind of like neutral in the middle. You don't really have uh, maybe the deciding say on if it should be merged in or not. And you're just kind of, you know, reviewing someone else's code for, for the fun of it. And then approve, you know, if you are attached as a reviewer or as an approver, um, you know, then, then, you know, maybe you would actually have to click review in order to allow um, the merge to actually happen, right? You can, you can set a bunch of different things up in settings that, you know, you need each PR to have X number of approvals, um, you know, or, or you can also hook into it from GitHub Actions to actually run uh, little scripts and deployment and do certain things when, you, when different actions happen. So comments, approves, or request changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and approve here. We're gonna go ahead and then submit our review. This should bring us back to, yep, the conversational side of things here. So then we'll see here, we have approved the changes. This is the overall, uh, you know, comment for the review. Looks good to me going to merge. And then we see this other one that's embedded inside of here. This is a good place for then maybe the author to kind of go back and forth with the reviewers to actually provide, you know, some rationale behind why they chose something um, or why they why they went the certain route they did or, or you know, clarify something if it wasn't clear to the, the reviewer or whatever the case is. As you notice here that this little bit of uh, code that we see is um, you know, quite obvious to actually look at, right? And we see what's going on here. If you were to just select one individual line, you would only end up seeing like this one line or, or maybe in this case, these, these two lines here because these are what has changed. Uh, but this is the reason why I like to kind of grab a little bit of the PR so you have some pretty good context here when you make these little comments. Uh, you know, just a small uh, bit of advice from myself, but not a big deal. You can always go ahead and resolve the conversation as well if there are, uh, you know, like a thread of, of messages and things of that nature. Not really anything too special. When we go ahead and merge here, there are a couple different options getting into the weeds with certain things. It really just has to do with how you want your, uh, you know, git history and, and the git tree to look. I am a fan of the squash and merge. However, in this case, it doesn't really matter. Uh, if let's say this PR had, you know, it only has one commit that we see up here. If this PR had 10 commits, if you were to then merge that into a branch, it would add in each of those 10 commits onto the branch that you're merging it into. However, if you go ahead and select the squash and merge, which is, uh, you know, my preference, it will actually merge all of those 10 commits down into one, and then it will place that single commit on top of, um, you know, the, the head of the branch you're merging onto. So it does help to kind of keep the, uh, the Git tree a little bit cleaner, uh, a little bit more obvious, and then you'll obviously get all of the commit messages along all of those 10 commits get kind of compiled into one big commit message, and then that is the commit message for the single commit that gets added to the branch. In case you didn't know, now you do. In this case, because there's only one commit, it doesn't matter which route you go, but I would always recommend using squash and merge from just general experience. So we're gonna go ahead and squash and merge. We're going to confirm squash and merge. Everything should update at this point. Um, I guess we can revert this if we really wanted to, but that's it. We're completely done. We've kind of cleaned up this bit of the PR head and bounce over to the code now because we are on the correct branch here, um, the episode eight branch, which by the way, if you haven't noticed, uh, every single episode of this season has its own branch. So if you pull down the code and don't recognize that, uh, just, just be aware. But anyway, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna click this blue uh, little uh, you know arrow kind of coming back to us to update the project, merge incoming changes, we'll do that. And then, this line of code right here, not sure if you saw it, if you didn't, maybe go back and take a look at it so you can see it in real time, but this line of code actually changed. We have this balloon down here that kind of comes up that tells us one file was updated, there was one commit, you can go ahead and view commits if you really wanted to, but that's it. We actually have our code base updated and uh, we, you know, we successfully updated from the pull request that we managed in GitHub. So if you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like, smash that subscribe button if you are brand new. And we're just gonna cover one other thing for a little bit of extra credit here, 
and then we will be on our way. So another little bit here with our, um, our sorted quotes calculation here is that this is happening every time we recompose, uh, which in this case isn't really a problem, right? Devices are fast enough. This list of, of quotes really has like 50 items in it. It's not really a very heavy calculation, so it doesn't really matter uh, for our users or our devices. Uh, however, you know, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't do something, you know, proper or at least more proper, especially in the compose pattern. So there was a different comment on an earlier video talking about the derived state of here and that we can use that so that we are not uh, recalculating everything all the time. Uh, so that's a really good shout. Uh, I opened the door for that person to also create a PR, uh, but maybe you just got distracted or whatever. So we're just going to use our by remember and then we're going to click in our derived state of and then we put in our calculation here. And so the benefit here is that, you know, compose can actually, uh, you know, recompose our composables for a variety of reasons. Uh, one of them is because certain elements of the state have changed and other ones are just for, you know, the framework doing its thing uh, that we don't necessarily have control over. So if let's say we're sorted by the author and this thing recomposes five times, this calculation here, the way it was set up previously would happen all five times. Now, because we recognize that the state has not been changing in that via the derived state of, it will not end up uh, redoing this calculation because it's now smart enough to know, oh, hey, we actually don't have anything uh, new to, to show or, or, or new to calculate because none of the bits of our state have changed. This is just a recomposition because of the framework. So therefore we kind of just like skip this step. So it is nice that the subsequent uh, compositions will not cause uh, you know this calculation to run again. Again, it's a very simple calculation. Devices can handle it. But if this was a more complicated calculation, then maybe we would actually really want to make sure we're using the derived state of and regardless, it's just a good idea to do um, so that we're keeping up to the best practices with Compose. So thank you for that comment in the uh, on the video. It's a good addition here. And that about wraps it up, folks. So uh, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, smash the like button, subscribe if you're brand new. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.